There's a lot of secret tricks inside Discord that can help make your experience a lot more productive and efficient and even solve a few problems that you've likely ran into before. But the issue is a lot of these aren't too obvious on how to do and you likely didn't even know that a lot of these even existed in the first place. So in this video, I'm gonna show you 20 different secret tips and tricks inside Discord. Before we dive in, I wanna give a quick call to action to let you guys know that if you need any help getting a Discord server set up, I actually have my own Fiverr gig where you can reach out to me and I can help get any Discord server you have in mind set up for you and your community. I've helped over 300 different people get Discord servers set up already, so if you need help getting yours set up, I'll have a link down in the description you can reach out to me over on my Fiverr. That's enough rambling, so let's dive into these tips and tricks. So let's start off with the first one. You probably already knew that you can hyperlink channels by typing in hashtag and then the name of a channel, but did you know you can also do it for voice channels? You'll notice when I do hashtag and try to type in general for the general voice chat, it doesn't pop up. But if we go back to the beginning and we do hashtag exclamation point, the exclamation point signals that you want to actually tag a, a voice channel. So then you'll be able to look at all your voice channels that you have and you can select the one you want to tag, enter, and whenever you click it, it'll automatically join you into that voice channel. Next up, we have large bold text. So instead of just doing the general double asterisk to be able to do a normal bold text, you can actually make it to where it increases the size of the text. To be able to do this, you're going to type in the pound sign and then space and then type in your message and that will get you the biggest text size that's available. If you do two hashtags and then type in your text, it'll be the medium size. And if you do three in the text, it'll be the smallest size available. So this is a look at the three different sizes of text that you can have. Next up, we have other formatted text. So things like bold, italicized, bold and italicized or strike through. If you didn't know, this is how you do all of these different formats. To do bold, you just do two asterisk signs on each side of the text and that will get you a bold text. To do italics, you do one asterisk on each side. To do bold and italics, you do three asterisks and to do a strike through, you just type in the tilde key twice on each side and that'll get your text strike through. Now to add on to this point a little bit, an easier way to do this is you can just highlight your text and click bold, click italics, or even click strike through, and it'll do all of this for you. Next up, we have hyperlink text. If you wanna be able to have a word take someone directly to a website without having a really long link, this is how you do it. What you're first gonna do is type in the open bracket sign and the closed bracket sign. And what you're gonna put inside these brackets is gonna be the text that you want to be displayed. Next up, you're gonna do open parentheses and close parentheses, and that's gonna have your actual URL. After you do that, just click the enter button and you should have hyperlink text. You can click it and it'll take you directly to the website that's linked. Next up, we have channel flare. If you're not new here, this is something I've talked about in a lot of my other videos. So you might be aware with this already, but if you wanna spice up the way your channels look, there's a really easy way to do so. There's a lot of different websites out there that have cool different special characters that give you natural spacing that you can use. For example, one that I use is this bullet point symbol. I'll have this link down below in the description for you guys, as well as a website where you can go and look at a ton of different options. You can use these characters to give your channel layout a really nice aesthetic. If you want to take it a step further and use emojis, you might notice there's no emoji button like there is on the typical message bar when you're going to send a message. There's a way around this. If you're on a Windows computer, you're going to hold down the Windows button and then press the period key and that's going to pop up the emoji keyboard where you can type in any emoji that you want and then you'll have the emoji with your natural spacing symbol and then the channel name. And you can save that and it gives the channels a much cleaner look. Next up is one that I've been asked about a lot. So say you use a bot like Sapphire that I've talked about in a lot of my other videos and you want to hyperlink a channel. So for example, you wanna hyperlink the rules channel just like you would do on the Discord side of things where you type in hashtag rules and then it links the rules channel. Well, if you come over to Sapphire and do it, you're gonna notice when you do it, you don't get any pop-up of what channel you wanna select. And if you preview it, it's not gonna be hyperlinked. Some bots support being able to directly hyperlink on the dashboard and some don't. Sapphire is an example of one that doesn't. Now there's a way to be able to do this with the channel's ID. The first thing you're gonna have to do is to be able to get a channel ID, you're gonna have to turn on developer mode. So you're gonna come into your user settings, you're gonna go down to the advanced section, and then you'll see developer mode at the top. You're gonna to wanna to turn that on. After you turn that on, you should now be able to right click a channel and then you'll have another option at the bottom that says copy channel ID. 
If you'll click that, that'll copy it to your clipboard. You're gonna come over to your bot dashboard that you're using. You're gonna use the less, the greater than sign. You're gonna do a hashtag or not a dollar sign, a hashtag. And then you're gonna paste the channel ID that you just copied. And then you're gonna close it off with the other sign. Now, if you preview it, you'll notice it actually hyperlinks you to the rules channel, just like you would do in Discord if you typed out hashtag rules. So that's how you hyperlink channels. Now there's also a way to do it with roles. So in Discord, if you wanna tag a role, you just type in the at sign, you click the role that you want to, you click enter, and it'll automatically ping the role. On a lot of bot dashboards, you'll run into the same issue we had with the um, text channel, and you won't be able to at ping a, any type of role inside the bot dashboard. We're able to do the same exact thing with roles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our server settings, we're gonna go to the roles tab, and we're gonna find the role that we want to be able to copy, to be able to ping. We're gonna right click on it, and then you should have an option for copy role ID. Click on that, and then we're gonna do the same thing, but a little bit different context over here. We're gonna open it up with the less than sign, we're gonna type in the at symbol, and then we're also going to type in the and symbol. Then after that, we're going to paste our role ID that we copied, close it off with the greater than symbol. And if we preview it, we will now be tagging the role. The next tip deals with server invites. A lot of people have no idea that by default, Discord invites when they're created are set up to expire after seven days. There's a way to change this, but the place to do it is really small. If you go to create a new invite by clicking the invite people button, at the bottom, you'll notice it says your invite link expires in seven days, and you'll have a blue clickable text that says edit invite link. If you click that, this is where you can set it to never expire. I always recommend having at least one link that never expires, and that can be the link you share out with all of your community to be able to join your server. Once you do that, you can click generate new link, and then you will get a new link that will be set to never expire. If you ever get random DMs from people that you have no idea who they are, there's a reason that's happening, and there's actually a way to stop it. 99% of the time what's happening is it's a random person that's inside another server that you're in and they're they're messaging you from you being from you two being in the same server. Now to be able to turn this off and I highly recommend it because there's a lot of scams and just DM spam that happens on Discord. If you come into your user settings and then at the top you'll have a privacy and safety tab. If you click on that right here under server privacy defaults, you'll have a setting to allow direct messages from server members. Turn that off and you will no longer get random DMs and spam from people that you have no idea who they are. The next tip deals with permissions. When you're setting up permissions, if you're doing them for every single channel individually, then you're doing them wrong. The easiest way to do permissions is to do them by category. So for example, this gesture category would be a category that only I would be typing in. It's for me to share personal announcements for my community, videos, live streams, and other content that I'm doing. I obviously don't want people messaging in these. So one way I could do it is I could go in each different channel and turn off the permissions for at everyone to send messages. But if you come out of that and you go into right click your category, you'll have an edit category option. And you'll notice you also have a permissions option for edit category category. What you can do here is you can turn off the ability for people to send messages, set up your permissions however you want for every channel in that category. And once you do that, every channel that is in that category and every new channel that you create in that category will automatically adopt those permissions. This saves you a lot of time from having to go and set permissions for each individual channel and it also future proofs it for you. So whenever you create new channels, you automatically have the permissions set. The next tip is a really cool one that a lot of people don't have any idea exists. So if you hold down the the control key and press the K key, you will get a pop-up that lets you go immediately to a lot of different places. So for example, you can go to any of the three recent channels that you access. These can be in completely different servers. So if I come up to my server and go to the general channel, and then I come back into this tutorial server and I do control K again, you'll see I can immediately jump to this channel inside my server from this server. Underneath that, you also have a draft section of any channel in any server where you started to type a message and you never finished it, you can immediately go there and be able to finish off that message if you want. And then you'll also have a section for mentions. This is anywhere in any server that you've been mentioned. You can also use your arrow keys on this. So if you wanna be really quick and not have to use your mouse at all, you can just hit Control K, go to where you want with your arrow keys, press enter, 
and you immediately go to that place. Speaking of keyboard shortcuts, if you hold down the control key and you press the slash key, this will give you a pop-up of every single keyboard shortcut that Discord offers, and there's a good bit. So you can look through some of these, see which ones you think might be really useful and productive for you, and take note of them. And a little Easter egg on the screen you may have not noticed. If you look at the top right, you'll see a bunch of glowing keys. If you hit your arrow keys, it's actually a Dance Dance Revolution Easter egg. So kind of cool. Not too long ago, Discord rolled out a message request feature where users can be able to message you without having you as a friend and it doesn't go to your actual DM inbox. It's a really easy way for you to be able to filter through something if it's spam or if it's an actual DM and someone you wanna to talk to. To be able to get to this screen, just go to your direct message button at the top left and then at the top, you'll have message requests. If you're tired of getting a ton of friend requests in Discord, there's actually a way you can turn it off. If you come into your user settings at the bottom left, at the top, you'll have a friend request option. Click on that and you can turn off different functionalities of who can send you friend requests. This is really helpful if you're in a server where a lot of people just send you random friend requests, you can turn it off specifically for server members. If you're in a lot of Discord servers and you're annoyed by constantly getting at everyone pinged, there's actually a way you can turn this off in each individual server. If you hover over the server logo on the left side server list, you can right click it and then you'll have an option for notification settings. Uh, if you hover over this one, you'll see suppress at everyone and at here. If you turn that on, you'll still get notified whenever someone specifically at mentions you, but you will no longer get notified every time that they do at everyone and at here. If you've ever wanted to ping someone but not actually give them an audible notification or a notification in their phone that they've been pinged, but rather just give them the red number at the corner of the server showing that they've been mentioned in the server, there's a way to do that and it's called silent pings. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into any text channel and you're gonna type in at silent and then you're gonna type in whatever the user is. So for this case, I'm gonna do myself and then you type in whatever you want the message to be and send the message and then you're gonna notice it's going to give me a ping. It's gonna show that I've been mentioned here, but next to it, it's gonna say, this is a at silent message. So I'm not actually getting an audible notification that I got this ping. This next tip is about bullet point lists. Not too long ago, Discord rolled out the ability for you to be able to make bulleted lists inside any channel. To be able to do this, you're gonna type in the dash sign and then whatever you want your message to be. And if we shift enter down a little bit, we can do a couple more and you can see we get a nice clean bulleted list. And you can take this a step further and be able to do sub bullets. If we come back up and edit this message and we shift enter down one more time, if we press the space bar and then do a dash symbol and do a space again, we can type in some more text and then resend the message and that will give us a sub bullet underneath the original bullet. It's a really clean way to be able to list out things inside any channel. This next tip shows you how to make custom timestamps inside Discord that retroactively change time. If you notice that it just changed from 15 minutes to 14 minutes automatically. This is gonna be in conjunction with this website that I'm gonna link for you down below in the description that'll automatically give you the format for whatever time you want. So say you have an event planned for February 7th at 5.30 p.m. You're gonna click the little calendar button. You're gonna choose the date that you want. So we're gonna do February 7th at 5.30 p.m. We're gonna click confirm and that'll give us a bunch of different ways that we can format how we want the date to be. So for example, if we want it to be a full list of what day it is and what time it's gonna be at, you can copy this one up here. And then if you just paste it into the channel and then send it, that will give you your full timestamp right there. If you wanna do one that retroactively updates by days and then hours and minutes, much like this one right here, then you can do this one at the bottom and that will be a retroactively updating time of when something is gonna happen. And that is 20 tips and tricks that you probably didn't know about inside Discord. I feel like I went a little bit fast on some of these tips. So if I did, I apologize. I just didn't want the video to drag on too long. You can always go back and rewatch any of the tips if I was a little too fast on them. Or if you wanna get more help or advice, you can always join my Discord server. I'll have the link down below in the description. I have a Discord help channel in there where you can ask any questions related, related to Discord and I'll get back to you with an answer. Hopefully you guys found some of these tips really cool and productive. And if you did, comment below which one was your favorite. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.